Hello and welcome to the second video review from WolfmansBytes.com. I'm Wolfman611 and today we'll be looking at the Microsoft Habu gaming mouse powered by Razer. For those of you wondering what exactly powered by Razer means, it means the Microsoft had control over the look and feel of the mouse and Razer took care of the internals along with the mouse driver itself. As you can see, you're looking at the mouse right now in a fairly dark room and you essentially have two LED lights, one under the mouse wheel and one that's in a light pipe that goes around the outer edge of the mouse. Both of these lights can be controlled with inside the mouse driver itself as well. Okay, now we have some lights on you can get a better look at the mouse. The first thing I want to look at is going to be the buttons on the mouse. This mouse comes with seven buttons. And I'll try and point those out to you here now. On the side of the mouse, which these are hard to see, you have two thumb buttons. Again, all the mouse buttons on this mouse are fully programmable and you handle all that with inside the mouse driver. So anyway, you got two thumb buttons you can access here on the side, left hand side of the mouse. And then you have your two big buttons here. This is your, uh, your right click and your left click. These two buttons here above the scroll wheel are both uh, under default conditions. They're your mouse sensitivity. Either turn the sensitivity up or turn the sensitivity down of the mouse movement itself. On the scroll wheel, of course, when you push that, you have your scroll wheel button. And that's essentially it. That's your seven buttons that you have access to. Now, really, I think the mouse only has five buttons because, for the most part, you don't want to change the default functions of the two sensitivity buttons. You want to keep those sensitivity buttons working pretty much in any first-person shooter game that I've seen, and that's the way you want to leave them. What I think they could have done with this mouse was to give the user a bit more in terms of options was it should have made the mouse so the mouse wheel here tilts either left or right. Some of the Logitech mice do this and they could have put two more buttons in that. So when you tilt the wheel left you get access to one button. When you tilt it right you get access to the other button. The other place they could have put more buttons with the mouse or actually on the mouse would have been here on this side. There's nothing here at all and they could have put two more buttons there. So if they would have added that, that would have put four more buttons on the mouse that you can do, you know, whatever you want with. While on the topic of the mouse buttons, when you buy this mouse, you get this little thing right here. And again, you can see that. Now what this is, is this can replace this button here on the side of the mouse. And the reason why I might want to do that is if I can get them both here in the camera shot, the buttons in this hand here are smaller than the ones that are installed on the mouse right now. The ones on the mouse are bigger. So, depending on what you like, you have an option here as to what set of buttons you're going to use. Now, the way to change the buttons is you flip the mouse over. And I don't know if you can see it or not. I'm trying to get this into the light. But essentially, where my finger is here, right here, there's a square button. If you push that button, you'll see the thumb button just ejected basically to the side of the mouse. So now you can take that thumb button out and then put the other one in. You just There's a little tab here on the corner right here. You stick that tab inside, put the button in, push down firmly until you hear the snapping sound. <laughs> Make sure you don't push too hard, you snap the thing in half. Uh, and there now, now you got your different button label then buttons that are smaller and closer together. So depending on what type of uh, person you are, at least you have an option here in terms of buttons as to what you can pick from. The one thing I like about this most is the actual uh, the control you have in terms of the movement. There's several ways. Like I was saying before, you have your your sensitivity buttons here above the scroll wheel that you can access and make the most super sensitive or not so sensitive. Or you can go into the mouse driver and in there you have there's, there's several different options uh, that you can control the mouse. So you can control the X axis and only have that be so sensitive. Then you can separate the Y axis and have that as well be more sensitive or not so sensitive. So there's a lot of options this mouse has. On top of that, you also have polling rates as to how fast the laser sensor gets pulled to pull the information in for the mouse. And you can go in there and mess with all that as well. So there's a ton of options to, to adjust the sensitivity of the mouse. Probably more so than most mice, I would think. But overall, they did a pretty good job. I, for a long time, I used to use trackballs, and probably for the last 15 years, I've been using 
just trackballs alone. I gave up on mice a long time ago. But I did that that many years ago, you know. The mice were, they had the little balls in there with the little mechanical wheels that would go up against it. And it took forever to move the mouse, you know, from one side of the pad to the other. And that would maybe move your mouse cursor an inch on the screen. So you were constantly always picking the thing up. I didn't have the desk real estate to, to, you know, to keep screwing around with the mouse. So it wasn't long after that that I decided that it was time to get rid of that and go with the trackball. And that's just what I'm used to. I've used the trackball for so long, first person shooters and all that, that uh, that's what I've been accustomed to. However, with this mouse here, for 99% of what I want to do, this mouse does it perfectly. Uh, like I said, you have so many options in terms of sensitivity that you can pretty much adjust it to whatever you want. You can have it so that you can move it right across the mouse pad and your mouse cursor only moves an inch on the screen, or you can have it so that you move the mouse an inch and your cursor you know, goes right full left all the way over to the full right side of the screen, the mouse cursor. So there's a lot you can do there. Uh, the one thing that I find or the most isn't so good is if you take a game like Battlefield 2 and you're inside one of the tanks, in order to spin the tank barrel around you gotta constantly pick the mouse, and this doesn't matter what sensitivity you got, but you gotta constantly pick the mouse up and then scroll over to one side then pick it up, reset the mouse, scroll over again. You might do this a couple times to actually get the tank barrel to do a 360 degree turn around the tank. That's a big thing because in them games you're constantly, especially if you're in a tank, you're constantly doing that. You're always looking for some guy sneaking up behind you or whatever the case may be. So that's the only uh, complaint I have in terms of what's better, the trackball or this mouse. When you actually get outside of the tank and you're running around doing the, the running gun stuff on your feet and stuff, I think this mouse here is as good as the trackball I had. The trackball I had was a Microsoft Trackball Explorer, five button trackball. That lasts for about five years, and I just recently started to have trouble with the uh, the one thumb button on it. I'm starting to give out. So it was then that I decided to decide to look around and see what was out there. And, uh, of course, I couldn't find any trackballs that would replace the one I had. All the new ones out there seem to have the same amount of buttons that I want, but they're cordless. Or the ones that, and I don't like cordless things. I don't like things that run on batteries. So the mice that didn't, or I should say the trackballs that didn't have... Uh, enough buttons, had cords, <laughs> and the trackball that had enough buttons was cordless. So I was screwed either way I looked at it. So it was time that I started looking at the mice because the mice actually have enough buttons. And they're innovative. I mean the fact that you can take a uh, Logitech mouse for example and have the scroll wheel tilt, you know, left to right and give you two extra buttons there, that's, that's a pretty good idea. Hopefully Microsoft at some point in time will add that into this mouse here. What I should talk about now is the actual feel of the mouse, and that's where this mouse, I really like this mouse a lot because the buttons you see here, the left and right button, they have a rubber coating on there that makes them, they're super smooth to touch. But on the same hand, there's enough uh, traction there where your fingers ain't going to be sliding all over the place. So that, that was pretty innovative that they stuck that on there. Only problem is, is that these two buttons here, the left and right, are the only two buttons that have that coating. Thumb buttons are your standard plastic buttons. The uh, sensitivity buttons are both the same thing, they're your plastic buttons. And actually the, the most wheel doesn't feel too bad, that's almost somewhat similar in terms of feel to the two buttons on either side of it. So that button there is fine. But the other ones are your standard plastic buttons. In terms of the most movement, it uses, t uh, which if you turn it over you can see it's got this, these Teflon pads. And then pads on a mouse pad, on this surface here, even here it slides around pretty smooth, but on most pad it's really smooth and there's no noise at all, it's quiet. In conclusion, you really can't go wrong with this mouse. As I have stated here, it's not perfect by any means, but it's a pretty slick mouse. For the most part, that works really well. At the time of this video review, you could purchase the Microsoft Abu Gaming Mouse, powered by Razer, for about $60 US. To see the detailed text review of the Microsoft Abu Gaming Mouse, please visit my website. If you have any comments or questions about my reviews, please visit the forums on the website and let me know what's on your mind. Once again, thank you for watching and until next time, this is Wolfman611, signing out.